Welcome back, guys. Podcast number six. Chris, what's up? Hey, I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. A lot of tired of this of... weather, but I'm ready to go, man. Yeah, we're supposed to get some cold weather here at the end of this week. Um, right. Earlier in this week, it was like 60 degrees and sunny, but we, we actually I woke up to some snow this morning. <laughs> wow. That's kind of odd for down here. I'm in the armpit, man. I've been in snow for weeks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, so what'd you do this weekend, man? You said you had a big weekend. We did. I had a busy week and a busy weekend. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, property we recently went on. And yeah, how'd that go? It was actually pretty good. The It was a client that I went to uh, earlier in the month that I designed a plan for. And it was in Virginia. And the property was an old uh, pasture. Uh, they had a lot of pastures, old pasture ground and stuff. And the property was majority, majority of it was taken over by cedars. Oh. So in those cedar areas, there's no food. Right. You know, they, they were so many, you know, bunched together. And Approximately how big was the? It was, the whole property was 87 acres. Okay. I was going to, okay. Yep. It did have some, you know, hardwood sections on it, but it also had probably, I want to say it was probably... 20 acres of field open right. field but the rest was uh cedars so and, is he planning on like food bunch of food plots now yeah so i mapped out a bunch of food plots for them that they're going to work on some switchgrass areas and then they had this big 10 acre um hillside uh south facing actually where it was all just cedars and these pi and giant pines you walk in there zero food so they actually found a person, a company, to come in, cut these cedars off this hillside, and literally just clear cut it. Okay. And they they were going to use it for uh, like a they were building barns and stuff out of the cedars. So oh okay. Like, the guy like jumped all over. Um. So yeah. he was all happy to get to get it, and they sh actually they should be cutting as we so speak. Like took it to a sawmill and had boards made and stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. gotcha. So they, uh, the landowner found this, you know, found them and they're coming in. They should be, they should be cutting now this week. Okay. Um, but they're basically clear cutting this hillside and just let it, you know, let it regrow. And then on the back corner of that was a two acre patch of hardwoods that backed up to some other woods. And they actually, I put a, told them to put a tree stand back in there, but they actually hired us a, hired us again to actually come in and do the work and it was a small patch that we worked on basically out of the whole property you know we probably only worked on maybe 10 or 15 acres of the property but they rented a skid steer and we came in they had a big four acre patch of these cedars and we came in and basically we did cut some with us with a chainsaw and then also took a skid steer and made kind of like you know, snake like trails through there on the lower part of it, which was the flattest part. And then on the, you know, hills part of it, we cut like different, like open areas of the cedars, basically just cutting them down, letting them fall. They can decay, decompose or whatever, just to kind of get more sunlight in there. And the way we use the bulldozer or skid steer to go through, we, did it in a direction of flow to where it led them from food plots to bedding the way the, the flow of the, the okay. lay of the, how the lay of the land was. So we, we directed the flow of deer movement through the cedars down into this Creek bottom where we also did cutting to where they can overlook a rifle stand up high on a Ridge looking down into this bottom. Okay. Let me ask you something. Inquiring minds want to know, did uh, did you lay the trees down in such a way for bedding, or did you guys tote these all off to one area and ditch them? Yep. So when we made these roads going through there, snake like trails, we also every 30 yards cut like an open area, like a pocket out, like an open area. We did take some cedars and put them in those areas so to add cover. So deer could bed in there okay. and we kind of separated them every 20 or 30 yards or so. The other areas up on the hillside, we didn't want to take the skid steer in there. 
but there was some flat parts but we in that uh instance we just cut the cedars down to let them lay gotcha basically basically just to get some extra food in there yeah just to get sunlight to the ground huh yeah and i want to make a point about that is a lot um i feel like the way i see it is the this entire area was covered in cedars i mean if you just drive 15 miles out it's all cedars all these properties had cedars on them massive Mm -hmm. so this is what the deer are used to you know, they're used to this type of habitat. So, right. you know, some people may hate cedars. Some people like them. I'm kind of in between, I feel. But to eliminate every single cedar on that property, you know, you could do that. But again, it's part of this, what they're used to. Culture shock. Right. So we say they're eliminating, say, 50% of them to start with. And then they okay. can come back and manage that over the, as years go on. Mm-hmm. So... The property was really lacking food and then some hardwoods we cut we did a bunch of hinge cutting we were there for two days mm. and uh it was a lot of work i couldn't move after, <laughs> you know but um cripple everything went pretty smooth really but it, yeah. you know jack was on the skid steer he was doing some stuff i jumped on it i was on it five minutes and derailed a track <laughs> so <laughs> um we had you have trouble with skid steers you know I, I do i have a bad history with skid steers <laughs> Um, so we, yeah. uh, we had to call the, or call the landowner. He come out and it was actually a buddy of his that, that he rented it from. He came out and they had it fixed in 30 minutes. They put yeah. it back on. Nice. Um, they you know, it's second nature to them, but yeah. So I was on it five minutes and derailed a track, but that's just some things that you got, you know, that the listeners can do is, you know, have an idea, never eliminate everything of, of something. I feel, yeah, you know, it's just the way I see it. That's what they're used to. The main idea is obviously just to kind of, if you have these cedar thickets, create, pass through them, cut some down, direct the flow of traffic of deer where you want them to go because a deer is going to go with the path of least resistance. Yeah. And I, I have uh, a story about that this week here. I just posted a video, uh, about a little experiment that I did Mm -hmm. and down here on my own property, I don't have a whole lot of brows, not much to speak of at all. I've been there many times. Yeah. And if I do, it's, it's over deer head high, you know, Mm -hmm. they've got it browsed up. So I had a lot of small birch trees coming, coming on, you know, like 15, 20 feet tall. And I don't really need them in there. They're not a whole lot of significance to them. Mm -mm. Um, I don't know that they're even a very highly preference, you know, high on the preference of a deer to eat. But given that there's not a lot out there, I wanted to go cut them down and put trail camera out. Mm. So I did that this week and I made a little video. I just posted it here. It'll be out before this video, before this podcast even comes out. And um, it was pretty interesting. It took 16 hours for the deer to find it Mm -hmm. but in retrospect that's not really that long uh given the conditions we have right now but they are out there searching yeah and uh, now did you did you cut these completely or did you hinge cut them i completely cut them okay yep i cut them off that i yeah i terminated them uh took them down and in the main trunk portions, I, I chopped them off and threw them off to the side and just left all the tops, the tops lay. There. And they were, they were so butted out. I mean, they had so many buds on them and mm-hmm. yeah, 16 hours. Though, it was pretty cool. I got some cool video uh, in the video mm-hmm. coming out. I had the uh, camera on video mode. So it was pretty neat. It was yeah. a nice little experiment, but said all that to say this, you were just talking about cutting taking too much of something and you know whatever Mm -hmm. now my neighbors down here to the north of me they had about 15 acres and they darn near clear cut it Mm -hmm. and made a huge mess but i went for a walk this week and uh i'm not really in favor of clear cutting something like that and getting rid getting rid of it all like you're saying Mm -hmm. but they were using that 
as uh, I, I don't know what I want to call it, like a safe haven. They weren't really betting in it per se, but man, the, all the tracks in the snow were heading straight through all that garbage. Mm-hmm. And, and it, they it was kind of using it like a tunnel, man. It was, it was going from one place to another. And, you know, I kind of thought they would avoid that area because it was so nasty. Mm-hmm. They do not. They just pick and choose their routes through there. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not going to keep them out, I guess. But I was just very surprised at how much they was using that area. Um, yeah, I mean, as long as they have room to room to walk through or yeah, they was getting they through there. They don't feel trapped or something. No. And on, on, on the other side of it, like on, on my side, it's all hardwoods and it, it transitions through that 15 acres of total decimation, which is only a couple hundred yards wide, but it was mm-hmm. real long. That's what, that's what made up the 15 acres. So they just had a short distance, a couple hundred, uh, yards to get through all that garbage but on the other side now guess what was over there what water and bedding mm-hmm. mm, gotcha there was a swampy area over there and deer love to drink tainted water i don't know why that is <laughs> but they love puddles and stuff like that but me personally i like clean water yeah no doubt so this 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 swampy area they were tramping all through that. Mm-hmm. And I even posted some pictures on Instagram uh, of some of the trails that I found this week down. It just trampled to the mud. And we've got you know, like six inches of snow on the ground, and they've had it trampled right down to the mud. Mm-hmm. And like I said, once you broke through there, then there was all, like you're talking, pine, cedar, whatever it is, all this green trees, real dense, dark, moist but no snow under there mm-hmm. and i'm pretty sure that's where you know a lot of them are bedding yeah and and on the outside of that now is a field so you know there's an instance where my food plots are on this side hardwoods water bedding fields it's like the perfect combination yeah they have it all right there but my point was like you don't really slow them down a whole lot. If they went through there and they can fit, they're going. Yeah. Well, the other thing we did too, or you know, listeners can do too, is Zach was taking the bucket of the skid steer mm-hmm. and just lifting it up high and and smacking the limbs off the trees okay. just to just to get sunlight in because when you walk through there, it was so thick, five feet down to the ground, and you know, five feet. Right. There was not a single needle on the trees oh, on, on the just, limbs just snapping off all the dead stuff because there's no there was no sunlight getting to that portion you know the right. top half of it had sunlight or had needles and stuff on it green yeah. because it was hitting sun but then the five feet down was completely dead and the reason i bring that up is because somebody i saw somebody on social media saying that you know pines are awesome um for like thermal wind protection <laughs> yeah but they're not when it's really thick if there's no needles or to, right. to block that flow right. that airflow so like there has to be you know balance with it but you have to open it up some everything's about sunlight yeah you can't have all that dead and dead stuff hanging like that i mean there's no not only that but you've heard people say well oh they eat pine needles and pine bark they do man they gotta they gotta be starving for that though man hey that first year at the farm we hunted together yeah the first year i was there they i had trail cameras on we've it. seen they, it they were eating pine needles yeah we've seen it i, I don't like to see that because <laughs> well the 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 ribs were showing all the deer oh my gosh yeah yeah ribs when were I, showing the very first year but we we fixed that in one year let's switch it up you going what? to harrisburg show unfortunately yes oh he's going he's going yeah are you <laughs> yeah i'm headed i bought i've got an online ticket for the first time nice i talked you into it yes yeah i i just thought about all the years past standing in that big line outside in the cold <laughs> in the cold and you don't want to wear too heavy of a coat because it gets hot inside 
because it's hot inside and you got to get rid of your coat somehow. And I always bring a backpack, but you can't roll up a big coat tight enough to get it into a backpack. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We, that yeah. Looking like you got a freaking uh, right. uh, uh, sleeping bag on your back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We, we knew each other was gone guys. Um, we're actually going to meet up and, uh, and walk around the show, but I got my ticket online as well. I'm going to yeah. go up. We're going to meet Saturday morning early. And we both, since we both have our tickets, we're going to go straight yep. through the doors. We're try to get in as quick as we can. <laughs> yep. Cause it's supposed to be, uh, I think below 30 degrees Saturday. Yeah. It's going to be pretty cold. So with this show, what, is, what are your thoughts on these shows? This, this Harrisburg show? Well, you know, and I, <laughs> We've talked, we, we, we even, we even did a podcast about this a couple of years ago when you had the other platform going. Yeah. It was like three years can, ago. You canceled that out, mm -hmm. but we, we were talking about how the, the shows are dying off mm -hmm. everything. I mean, cause you can do anything online now or virtually and, uh, you know, people don't need to go walking around looking at things unless they're, I mean, I like doing it to be honest. I, I like to put my hands on things, but there's a lot of people don't want to drive that far to go do this. Like I got to drive three hours to get to this show. You can shake everybody's pee hands. Yeah. Everybody don't wash their hands. They yeah. don't want to shake. That's a, that's a thing with this show guys. It, it's uh it's a cesspool and <laughs> I'm not really like a, like a germaphobe really too bad, but like there's something with this show. I'm telling you, it's just like when you get, you get sick done, every year, when you get done with it, you just want to, go home, burn your clothes and shower for like six hours. Cause yeah. you're shaking millions, hundreds of people's hands. They're going to the bathroom. They're not, it, uh, it's just, <laughs> I, I, I started getting everybody fist bumps and elbows. <laughs> Got the heebie jeebies. Yes. I'm, so I'm, is there anything that you're looking forward to seeing at this show? Um, I want to for anything. I am specifically um, ammo. Yeah. I want to, I need some ammo and TJ, you know, TJ, yes. he wants ammo. So I'm going to, he's got me, a, he's going to send me a list of stuff that he wants. Um, Are so they I'm allowed looking, to sell ammo though? I, I, I'm pretty sure that they have ammo. I'm not sure. Cause I'm pretty sure Let's TJ see. came up a couple years ago and bought it. Okay. But, um, I'm looking for ammo and I, I want, a good pair of hiking boots. Ah, I want to see if they have any boots and then anything a, in, in mind. Not really. I don't really Name brand. Well, I was looking last night at Solomon's Solomon hiking boots because <laughs> never heard of them. Well, Solomon makes like snowboards and stuff. Oh, so, okay. um, I used to snowboard a lot, but, um, yeah, I can't snowboard now. I'll break a hip, but, um, cause you're I'm looking, Yes, I'm looking at those boots. See if they. I don't think they're going to be there, but I'll I'll check. Other than that, that's really the only two things. And then just hang out with your goofy self and try to trip you a bunch. And you uh, tripping me, I'm too fast. I'm gonna trip you and uh, <sighs> see who we run into, and we'll, we'll talk to some some boots and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's my plan. Yeah, were well, you saying about my thoughts? Anyhow, I got I got lost on my thoughts there. I got thoughts too. <laughs> there was, I, I did see this year, there's a lot of vendors that were coming back. Remember last year, how, how there was like empty booths. Mm -hmm. Although I've heard there was a couple, uh, a couple vendors that aren't going to show either. Well, it's like you that know? every year. Yeah. I mean, some of the guys are like up in age and they can't sit there for nine days straight. You it know? is a, it's a long show. That, that's a marathon, dude. That ain't a, that ain't a race. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. I yeah, it's nine days there. It's too yeah. long. Um, I know the booths are very expensive, very expensive. Um, a lot of people don't realize how expensive they are. I've never had one, but I just I know how much they cost. Mm -hmm. And um, and it it's a lot of uh, time to to go there for nine days, which you're looking probably at like eleven days by the time you drive up, get a yeah, hotel, set up, yeah, you know, set twelve up, days. Down. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of time to be away from home. And if people have a business and stuff they're you know, it's, it's tough, but the show I used to go to when I was a kid, it was, it just seemed different. It was more of hunters being there. 
now it seems like it's just non hunters and it's people just looking for like little knickknacks type type things and they're not they're not like like really hunters that that's going to the show it's just like oh it's saturday let's let's go to the show and just kind of walk around and eat a corn dog and a chocolate chip cookie from the amish yeah see what's up yeah it's not really really hunters going there discussing hunting with the vendors and you know what i'm saying oh i know exactly what you're saying look look at when we sat in a booth yes you know you and i sat in a booth there for a while and a couple years in a row and people unless you engage them they don't even engage you unless they actually have a question you know i would try to interject and like hey have you seen this product before or you know are you interested in this or do you food plot you know you it, they would actually talk back or someone you know a lot of them were like oh, not interested sorry they it's just hard it was hard to interact with these people mm-hmm. you know because like you say a lot of them just seem like the yuppies that go out on the first day of deer and then that's it yeah, it's just, I think people are just bored, so they just say, hey, let's go to the hunting show, but it's like, it's just people that's not even hunters. Well, you know what I'm tired of at the show? I really, what, are you, what are you tired of? This is what I'm tired of. The gimmicks. Yeah, right. I'm tired of all, every, there's a gimmick for everything, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, I like real legit stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't like all the gimmick stuff. You know, you need this because you got that. and. You know, I just, I get tired of it. Yeah. I mean, There's, I don't want to. Everybody's know, trying to make a buck. I get it. But yeah, phew, I don't it's de- getting to be a rich man's sport. Yeah. I don't want to degrade the show. You know, it, it is a. No, it can, it's a good show. I enjoy it. I do. It's the biggest. I mean, there's so many people there. Um, If you've never, if people have never been, you know, I would definitely encourage them to go at least once just to check it out. And you can find deals on stuff, but it's it's like remember two years three years whatever it was we were there i wanted the knife yeah i want i wanted an outdoor edge knife yeah and see and i went (laughs) i went there let me preface this yeah he told me he wants outdoor edge knife so i tell him i I was hyped up about this knife he was and, and and i was like hey my buddy is a rep over outdoor edge and i know he's in that booth i said let's go over and see him Go ahead. You take it away. So I wanted, I was hyped up about this knife. I was talking about it. I go over there and I go to buy this knife and I bought it. Well, I thought I was getting like a deal on it. And then like later that day, I ended up looking it up on Amazon and I paid like $15 or something more for the knife. Yeah. And, and I know the people, right. And I'm like, Hey, this guy here wants to buy a knife. What kind of deal can you give us? Mm Mm-hmm. And they like knocked money off supposedly mm-hmm. and, and still paid more for it. And he still paid more. And here I thought they was doing me a favor because I knew them giving him a good deal. <laughs> and he finds out he got, he paid more. Yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't I, really worried about it, but like, well, I was, well, I was kind of jaded about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't, I mean, uh, these are my buddies, but they live in my hometown in here. Right. You know? Right. I mean, I didn't need, you know, any, special deal i just figured it was like being that you're at the show yeah show special it would be some sort of thing and you know i i'm not bent out of shape about 15 dollars, but it's just the point of everybody can get things online now yeah buyer beware huh yeah you can get stuff online and you don't have to pay the 15 20 dollars to get into the show and then you have to pay the 15 20 dollars to park it's more of yeah the camaraderie camaraderie set up you know that people are are there for yeah and that, that's a, everybody's like why do you keep going back and i said well i don't know why i keep saying every year i'm not going but yeah i've made so many friends you know with even the even with just the vendors like just buying their products every year and things yeah. and well, that's where i and, met you at yeah basically yeah yeah that's where i met that's where we met at at the show and uh just making friends, being at the show, talking to different vendors and using different products. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, 
I just read online tonight that one of the one of the guys that sells bear scents is going to be back this year, mm-hmm. and because uh, I didn't I didn't see them last year, so that's cool. I'll get to say hi to them this year. Who would have thought we met at the show, and then two years later we buried a skid steer up almost past the the top of it? Not we, you. You were pa- <laughs> you were pa- you were panicking. Oh, you you talk about panic? What I have? I had a half of a broken shovel or something. I was yeah. trying to dig it out with. This this kid's here was buried. Handle were, was broke, and I had like yeah. two feet of trying to dig. We were this. we were deep in this in this oh, uh, kid's here. It was deep. It was yeah. Deep. But so, uh, well, we did a we did a job on that property, and yeah, and we buried a kid's here. It, it was good while it lasted. Yeah, at least the the owner thought it was funny. Yeah, the owner of the skid steer. Yeah. Yeah, he. Yeah, he was okay with it. He treated us all right at first. But he acted mad afterward, you know. But yeah. Whatever well, is yeah. what it is. It is what it is. It happens. So on on social media, I have seen some stuff, and we did talk about this prior. But uh, I want to discuss the wrap. This podcast up uh, is kind of like the wrong the right and wrong way of things. If, if when it comes to habitat, you know, work improvements, food plots, whatever it is, there's a million different ways you can do something and people get it in their mind that there's only one way to do it. Okay. And if somebody goes against that, they're a terrible person. They're doing it wrong. They're not going to have success and so forth. So I want to talk about that of just there. People are just so rude on social media and they bash people for no reason. I, I saw a post tonight before we got on a guy. He right up front. He says, Hey, I'm new, new to this site. I'm new to food plotting. Uh, I'm going to do my first soil test. I want to know like what kind of clover I can plant and that I, I wanted to plant this clover before fall. Mm -hmm. Well, all the experts come out of the closet and, you know, told him what he needed to do and how he shouldn't, he shouldn't put that clover in in the fall because all that'll do is set them up for next spring. And, you know, if you want to hunt over it this year, you need to get it established in the spring. And they're right. They are right. But the way they was talking to this guy, you know, he, he just said how new he was to it. And he, he mm-hmm. was explaining that he was a novice and these guys just jumped him. Mm-hmm. Well, even like the advanced people, you know, each person has their own way of doing things. And not that they're wrong because their way may work. But if somebody else sees them doing it their way. You know what I mean? And not doing it their, you know, their way. Yeah. They just, it's just so many negative comments. For instance, you know, people are so on this trend of no-till stuff. Driving and nuts. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, I had a video the other day of me describing a food plot. Actually, I, I made a video back in the fall of, uh, we basically took um, overhaul from the main. Yeah. And we planted it and we just dissed it back in the soil very lightly, only the top, you know, a couple inches. Right. And I had a lot of, a lot of duff, duff. on, on top of the soil. And, you know, it, I, uh, I slung the brassicas out over top of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't caught the packet. I didn't roll it. I didn't do anything with it. Right. And I posted that video, 50 comments saying, I'm an idiot. There's no way this food plot's going to grow. I should have no-tilled it. You have to call it the packet. You have to roll it and so forth, right? Nah. I came back four weeks later and did an update video. It was a beautiful food plot. Yeah. I mean, a beautiful food plot. Right. So why did I get attacked? You know what I'm saying? It's like. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it didn't fit their narrative. That's why. It didn't fit their narrative. Yeah. It's just, it blows my mind on the, on this stuff. And this oh, whole, I, I get it all the time because it, I always you know, show B-roll me or something, you know, using the, a uh, cultivators or discs and I, I'm destroying all the biome and all the, 
all the bugs and life that's in the dirt and the sun's baking my dirt and all I'm, the oxygen i'm eroding i'm a you know all the erosion the wind's blowing my topsoil to the neighbor's farm and all this stuff yeah and i'm like are you kidding me yeah but hey i would agree if i if i owned a no-till drill i would use it in some instances yeah but well, i it has it has a time and place for it yeah i don't yeah. have it not you know and and now this whole thing with the rolling of the buckwheat you know rolling and, rolling and, and crimping and well not everybody has a freaking crimper no. i haven't i haven't seen a single farmer crimp anything those things are expensive they're and not to mention when you're when you get into like the wheat and rye and stuff you have to crimp that at a very specific time in order to, to kill it. stage yeah. yeah in order for it so who what food plotter can time their self their time that close of when a piece of wheat is in the dough stage for them right. to go crimp it well and i even had i had wheat and rye in the same plot mixed mm -hmm. and they weren't at the dough stage at the same time yeah so i had right. to go in i ended up brush hogging it all yeah yeah i brush hogged yeah. and sprayed it dead yep um it's just it's weird man people they come up with this stuff and they just bash people and a lot of times if they say these things they They're never repeating. even done it they never seen even it done somewhere it. else. Yeah, yeah, they just seen it somewhere else, but they have no experience with it whatsoever. True. But they're just say, repeating what somebody else says. I see it all the time on on because I I know because I've been making videos a long time. When somebody says a certain phrase, yeah, I'm like, oh, they're they're repeating exactly they're what so and so said. Yep, yeah, they're watching his videos. Yep. yep, I see it all the time, and yep. I go to look at their Facebook page or the social media, and it's for like cats and dogs. <laughs> there's no food plots there's no habit there's <laughs> not there's you know yeah, right it's just it's very odd yeah it, well the the most common response is plant rye whatever bro want. yeah yep but yeah hey the social media anyhow to ask a question i mean i'm so hesitant to answer anything anymore even mm -hmm. i stay if you off. don't yeah, yeah i don't i don't even answer these people anymore like I bite my tongue. Like I, I have the phone in my hand, like ready to text them. And it's like, nah, someone else will come up with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's you just, know. you know, it, and it ruins it for like the, like you said, the new people getting into well, it. Because, I would like to help somebody. Yeah. But, but then you try to help them and then somebody else jumps 50 in. 50 other guys jump in and, and try to explain away what you told them. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, okay, whatever. Yeah, it, it's tough. I just I stay off of it. And like I said, guys, there's there's 50 different ways to do the same the same thing. And it's it's all about you your know, goals too. How yeah. you you know what you want. Yeah. You don't have to. It's not a cookie cutter. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like that. Yeah. It's it's all in what you, how you want to do something. What's your goals? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to have a plan. Mm -hmm. Can't stress it enough. Yeah, you don't need a no-till. You don't need, I mean, you don't no. need a roller. You don't need a crimper. You don't need, it, it's very, food plots no. are very, very, very simple to do. Yeah, it, it's made to be a science anymore. They mm -hmm. make it into a science and they just confuse everybody. Yes. You know? Yep. I mean, it was so easy. Cavemen could do it. A monkey. You're a good example it. of that. A monkey can do it. You can do it. It's a monkey. caveman. Monkeys. You caveman. I'm a caveman. Well, that was episode six, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, he's White Tail Obsession. I'm City Sticker. Subscribe to our channels. Listen to the podcast. You can find the video podcast on my channel. And uh, we appreciate you. Yeah, we'll see we'll you see guys. see you guys next time. Thanks for listening.